Welcome to Ipoh, a side of Malaysia that many tourists tend to overlook. Ipoh is known for its white coffee, which actually originated here. And boy, did we drink a lot of the stuff. But no one told us about the food. Snow beers, rainbow grilled cheese, salted chicken. <laughs> Malaysia has been holding a secret little food haven. Not to mention Ipoh has its share of amazing temples and cool murals. We're just glad we didn't overlook this place and you shouldn't either. Our detour starts with a train ride leaving from Kuala Lumpur. We got two and a half hours to Ipoh. How soon are you gonna bust into those cookies? Uh, I'm busting into them right now. Come here. <laughs> During our train ride, we took in the view and got some editing done. We had no idea what to expect in Ipoh, but as far as initial impressions go, we already liked the vibe. And um, about this hostel we stayed in, Sarah describes it as... Industrial chic. <laughs> Looks like they have an industrial chic pool too. <laughs> Jokes and appearances aside, this place was $17 a night in a great location and really quite nice. And it's close to something that we've been wanting to try in Ipoh, white coffee. Tony told me I was not allowed to try any white coffee before trying it in Ipo, so that's what we're doing this morning. And coffee TMs, which are like traditional coffee shops, are supposed to be the best place to find some. The prices here are so much better than Kuala Lumpur. <sighs> white coffee is a unique style to Malaysia. It's sweet, it's nutty, and it's made from what some might find in a strange way. So I'm not even gonna pretend to be an expert, but basically white coffee is just how it's prepared and presented with margarine. So the coffee beans are roasted in condensed milk and margarine, and then presented to you just like this. What? That's really good. This might be a new fave. The coffee also comes with crackers, and we ordered Kaya toast. The best thing about all of this is that not only is it delicious, and a very sweet way to kick off the day. It was also pretty affordable. The coffee was, I think, 350 ringgit, three ringgit 50 cents. Our double toast was a couple of ringgit, so can't complain about that. A couple of coffees and a side of toast only cost us 18 ringgit. I'm always gonna love a drink that comes with a snack. That was it. Right now we are on one of the three most famous streets in Ipo. This is Market Lane. So essentially what happened, a mining tycoon purchased up these three streets and then gifted them to his three wives. Locals then nicknamed these streets. So there's Wife Street, there's Concubine Street, and there's Second Concubine Street, which is the one we're on now. And I am dying to hear the backstory on that. What just happened? We had to run across the street. 60 seconds ago, there was like a bald eagle circling and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then we ran across the street and then something slapped on the ground. I thought it was like a branch. Snake slapped and then it was like stunned and just sat there and then it sl slithered off. We would have walked right under it. Successfully avoiding a traumatic animal encounter, it was time to explore some temples. Ipoh has quite a few cave temples, some that are only a stone's throw away from each other. We visited three during our stay, but the main one that we're here to explore is Sam Po Tong, a Chinese temple magnificently built within a limestone cave and is actually the oldest cave temple in Ipoh. We spent a while wandering the grounds before making our way to what we think is the main attraction, this beautiful pagoda building reminiscent of Buddhist temples in Japan. So we were walking past and we saw this museum and it actually looked pretty interesting. We aren't museum people, but we decided to step in because it was only 10 ringgit. But apparently this is what Ipo looked like back in the 50s. And we're actually glad we stopped in. Honestly, we didn't know a lot about Ipo at this point and the museum helped us understand a little bit more of the history of this city. At the museum, we learned that Ipo was actually burnt down in 1892. That's where that mining tycoon comes in. Remember him? He helped rebuild the town. But on a positive note, here's another fun fact we learned about Ipo. They used to consume more Hennessy here than the rest of the world. They like that Henny and Ipo, huh? That hen dog. Next up, coffee. So here at Cafe Pack Lima, I got the spicy fried rice with chicken, and it was so good. It smells so good. Juicy, tender chunks of fried chicken on fried rice. I also ordered the Chinchow white coffee, which is white coffee with grass jelly on top. 
Of course, at the time, I wasn't exactly sure what it was on top of my coffee, but it was pretty good. I haven't a clue what <laughs> this is on top. Maybe a jelly? As for me, I had Nasi Lamek Ayam Garang and an iced white coffee. So good. New fave. Mm. Together, our meal cost 35 ringgit. We're gonna skip ahead a little bit because we really didn't do much for the rest of the day. But in the evening, we made our way to the market. Welcome to the Ipo Night Market. We were actually gonna try to walk here, but we decided to take a grab once we figured out how far it was. But here we are. I think this market's open every day. It's supposed to be at four. Doesn't look like it's quite open yet. Maybe it's just starting out, but we're gonna do what we usually do, and that is wander around a little bit and probably buy a lot of food. And that's exactly what we did. Starting off with these sweet potato balls, you can mix and match different flavors for seven ringgit. So we tried one of each. So I am prone to eat with my eyes, especially at night markets. The first thing, well, the second thing I found, these little sweet potato balls, they just look really colorful and delicious. So we're gonna try these first. <laughs> Next is the classic nasi goreng danging for eight ringgit. <laughs> to wash it down, I grab the biggest mango fruit drink I've ever seen. And of course I had to grab the most ridiculous looking thing I could find at the market, which was this rainbow cheese toast for 15 ringgit. How do I even, this is like Just silly it. putty. Is it hot? <laughs> oh God. It tastes like grilled cheese, but it kind of tastes like candy too. It's weird. <laughs> it's got a glob of it. I'm not a fan of that. This is by no means the largest night market we've ever been to, but it's kind of insane that they have a swimming pool and a go-kart track in the middle of it. Okay, so the last thing we ate at the night market was this loaded fried chicken burger. This has got to be the weirdest assortment of foods we've ever eaten. Here we go. Yeah, this might clog some arteries. The next morning, we saw how the locals do at these local coffee joints and ordered some more white coffee. But this time, I got the egg custard tart. I loved it, but Sarah, she wasn't a fan of the texture. Got the texture of a hard-boiled egg. The flavor is not bad, though. Since we only split an egg custard for breakfast, we went out hunting for some food, and Sarah had her mind made up on exactly what she wanted. Chicken box. Chicken in a box. Right now we're walking to get chicken box, one of Ipo's signature dishes. It's a salted chicken that comes in a box and there's no dine-in. You just take it away and eat it or you can gift it to family and friends. Vending machine chicken. You want a box or you want a bag? I want a box. I don't want vending machine chicken. Chicken box. Y'all, this chicken was juicy. It was delicious and flavorful, and I'm honestly not sure how we'll ever go back to grocery store rotisserie chicken again. It started to rain later in the afternoon, but it wasn't gonna stop us from one last Ipo specialty. So we're ending the night at Cafe Yun Wan to get some snow beers and a little bit of food. It'll be a perfect nightcap for this incredible trip in Ipo, but let's get some beers. The snow beer was an interesting experience. The beer mugs are frozen, and when the chilled beer is poured into the frozen mugs, it tastes like pours. The beer freezes up, and it's almost like a beer slushy during the first few seconds. Mmm. Oh my god. The pork is so good. Food is good here. We got some fried pork and rice with that. It was like 31 ringgit. Prices are on scale, pretty average, but I think we usually just order more expensive things. But the snow beers, 
for a large was just 20 ringgit. Yeah, and we have noticed that alcohol beer prices in Malaysia are a lot higher than what we are used to in Thailand. So this is definitely, I think, the best deal we've seen so far. So I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of cool. Like I went into this thinking it was just gonna be a frozen mug and they do those all over the place. But they do something with the beer where the foam just turns into like this frothy little beer icy. <laughs> it actually tastes really good. We're a little confused because we came at like three and they were open, but nothing was set up. And so we came back at like eight and all these tables were set up and it's raining right now and we are perfectly dry sitting outside. So if you want to come rain or shine, this is a good spot for dinner. Our snow beers and our food here cost 31 ringgit. That's a wrap on Ipo. Next, we travel to Georgetown. More food, more temples, and a surprise celebration. See you there.